everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 8, Science. For everyone else, that just means we're going to be talking a little bit more about plants today. We're going to be talking about seed-bearing plants, um, which includes flowering plants and non-flowering plants. But if you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. There's a link in the description if you need it. Um, I've created some workbooks that go along with each of these videos. There's four worksheets per video, per subject, per week. So uh, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and buy those there. I have also separated them into quarters. So if you would prefer, you can um, purchase them by quarters. Order. So I hope that's helpful. Um, without further ado, let's start doodling. Like I said, today we are going to be talking more about plants. First, we're going to talk about some types of seed plants. And today, specifically, we're going to talk about monocots, dicots, and conifers. So monocots and dicots are the two major types of flowering plants. Now, did you notice when looking at these words that they start with mono and di? Well, this means one and two, and they refer to how many cotyledons the plant's seed contains. So what are cotyledons? Well, they are these structures that provide energy and nutrients to a young plant. A cotyledon is a part of the seed that will grow into the first leaves of the plant. So what does that mono and di part refer to? Well, mono means one, and monocots have only one cotyledon. And di means two, so dicots have two cotyledons. So let's talk about some differences between monocots and dicots. Monocots can be identified by their flower parts. Flower parts of a monocot come in multiples of three, whereas flowers of a dicot come in multiples of four or five petals. When looking at the leaves, monocot leaves have up and down veins that are parallel with each other, whereas dicot leaves have veins that are scattered amongst the leaf, or you can say that they are netted and they don't follow any type of recognizable pattern. Now, both of these types of plants are similar in that they both have vascular bundles. And vascular bundles are the veins of the plant, and their purpose is to carry nutrients and water up and down the stem or the trunk. Another difference arises when looking at the roots of these two different plants. Monocot roots have no main root and they are just dispersed, but dicot roots have a main root, which is also called a tap root with other roots coming off of it. Some examples of monocots include lilies, orchids, and grasses, as well as large palm trees and climbing vines. Monocots are very important because they also include things like corn and wheat, as well as pineapples and bananas. And these are important staples of our food system. Now, some examples of some dicot plants include tomatoes, roses, coffee, apple trees, maple trees, and even peas. And these are also important plants, but they, you can see how they all serve different purposes. Now, we're going to talk about non-flowering types of seed plants, and this would be conifers. The word conifers means bearing cones. So that just means that all of these types of plants have cones that they keep their seeds in. Conifers are all mostly woody plants. And some examples of conifers are trees such as pine trees, cypress trees, cedars, and redwoods. Now, conifers can grow all over the world. 
and they are typically found in cooler regions, but interestingly, there are some that can grow in warm regions. Typically, they are found in the northern parts of Europe, Asia, and North America. But, like I said, the ones that can grow in warm regions can be found in the tropical rainforests of Asia and Australia and even Africa. Conifers can range from being very tiny, low-lying shrubs to the redwoods in California, which are very, very tall trees. Now, let's talk about their leaves. Their leaves don't look like leaves. They look like needles. But some of them have different shapes, like scales or even wedges. These leaves or needles have a waxy coating that helps them to keep from losing water during periods of drought. Most conifers have pretty shallow roots, but even though they are shallow roots, they typically have a root system that stretches out quite wide. Now, instead of growing fruit or flowers, they grow these cones. Now, most conifers cones are an oval type shape with scales on the outside of it and they use these cones to reproduce wind carries pollen from some cones to other cones and then seeds develop under the scales and when the scales open these seeds fall out and the wind can then again carry these seeds to other places or animals can carry these seeds to other places where the new conifers can grow. I mentioned the redwood trees in California, and they are not only some of the tallest conifers in the world, some of the tallest trees in the world. Some redwoods are taller than 360 feet. There are also giant sequoia trees in California, and these are the heaviest conifers. They can weigh up to 4 million pounds. Then there are also some of the oldest conifers on earth, and these would be the bristlecone pines. It's not unusual for them to live to be three to 4,000 years old. And they also grow in California, but their range can also spread a bit into Nevada. So as you can see, God created all the seed bearing plants on this world and he created them all to be adapted to their own specific environments so that they can reproduce and in all creation glorifies him and so we should remember to do the same and that's all we have for today be sure to do your homework do those four pages that are found in the doodling through education workbooks you have some matching and some comparison between these different types of plants this week. And remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.